Right. Beautiful scenery. That's where I was, right? I've seen some people coming down that path. I climbed up that path there this morning up up to the hill fort down down for a hill fort. I've had a massive walk since. If you go down, if you turn left just down there, it takes you down to Shepherd's Coombe and down through the fords and the coombs and all the streams. And I'm taking the Lady's Edge, this is called. I'm walking up. There's another path just over there as well that you can take. There's another path not far away. But I'd done that one not, not that long ago. But I haven't done this one for a while, so I thought I'd do this one. This is the one I think I did with Zara. After we've been to our fox and house that time. God. I've walked all round. All round. All round. I've done all that. It's been beautiful. Friendly people are the ones I have met. And now, when I get quite a way yet, once I get further over, I'm actually going to go down a track I haven't done before. It's near Old Fox and House. Um, but I actually haven't actually done this particular one. I think it's quite steep coming up, so we'll be going down it. Sometimes they burn all the heather, you know. It's got a special name, they... Whoever owns the land or in charge, the wardens. Every now and again, they sort of do some burning, but I haven't... I don't know if they're bothering this year, because... They're letting the animals out. There's an awful lot of bees around, I tell you that. Yeah, we're on, basically we're on the way back, and so instead of going around the corner and walking down through the valley, through the coom, I'm, um, doing Lady's Edge. I think this is called Lady's Edge. That's what it looks like when you see it on the map. It's a bridal path. Imagine this on a very blue sky day, though. Everything would be accentuated, wouldn't it? All the colours. But of course the smell is there. I'm just going to look back one more time over there. There's a hill in the distance, far, far distance. See that hill there? Dunkery Beacon. That's on my list in the next two weeks. And there's quite a few villages over there where I haven't done the churches off. We're getting close to the edge of Somerset once we start pushing over that way. It is quite warm. I've had to take my jumper off even though I was trying to protect my arms. Um, <clears throat> being up here, I'm less likely to get the, the flies and the gnats. There's another reason for not going right in the coom as well, basically, because that's where you're going to get loads of them just waiting to bite you down there. So basically, I'm weaving around the top here, Lady's Edge, as they say. Weaving around. Got to do a little, little bit of a climb. Just a little bit of a climb now. Not much. Then I'll be coming down a very small bridle path, very close to Holford Green, and Alberta. 
and uh, it would have been a successful day. I've managed to do it in a safe time as well. You know, I've managed to do it in a safe time. Long time this morning when I was right over that way, I see someone up here walking. They had like a blue top on. So people do stick out. I would be stuck out with my red jumper on. I would be, be stuck out with someone with a camera. They would um, easily find me. But I said I got quite hot having this jumper on as well. Because I mean, it's all, it is still a bit early for jumpers. <clears throat> But I have had a lot of horsefly bites this year. And maybe the odd tick, I'm not really sure. Sometimes I think there was one tick. And I have been very tired for three weeks. So I don't know whether I have been infected with anything. Uh, probably just all the walking I've done and in the heat wave. So once again, I'm prolonging this little bit of video. Just so you get a feel of where I'm going and the scenery, the majestic scenery all about. And just imagine, as Wordsworth was going back, his house was up here, oh Foxen. He would have done, I think he would have done this route, Ladies Edge, quite a lot. And uh, they would have done the coon, but this would have been a straightforward track over to Bicknola, which is a village over there. So I can imagine Wordsworth doing this, and he could be on a walk now, <laughs> creating his poems, writing his journal, being inspired and admiring everything, which wouldn't have changed that much in 200 years. It wouldn't have. Believe me, 50 years goes quick and nothing changes. What's another 350s? Nothing. Nothing at all. <sighs> Yeah, they would have walked this route. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it could be that in 200 years, the National Trust, whoever, have come out and lined some of the pathways with some loose stone. It could be that that has happened and some maintenance on the tracks. I mean, I don't know whether carriages of any sort ever went over the main. That could have been much neater truck in the past, who knows? But I've just been all the way along there, over the hill, along, through the wood, up on the hill for it. And down there is where I normally follow. Down there, the stream. And I look up here. Look up here. I'm not sure if it's fading now. I'm not really sure. Could be that it's fading now. It does look a little bit brownier in there. Now when I was out here three weeks old ago, maybe four weeks ago actually, because I did some coastal walking, um, it was just coming out the heather. So it doesn't actually last that long really. The gorse probably lasts longer. And there's bits of heather there as well, the blue. So there you are, I'd be on the track down there now where those sheep are, down right a bit further over, weaving my way down through the coombe. I haven't seen any deer. I've been looking and scouring the, the hillside. Nothing. It's almost as if they've been warned, go away, it's not safe here. It's very strange because someone's been up on Exmoor and there's like two, there's like herds of 200 deer together. So, I don't know what's going on at the moment, whether they've culled some, who knows. Yes, I do want to do X, X more as well. I could do with, well, money's tight, I'm single and on my own. So, I know that Alberta... She's done well, like this is her fifth year with me. One day she, I won't have her. 
I'm hanging on to her as long as I can because it'll cost me just as much to run a car. She's not really expensive to run. She, I mean, she's got to have things replaced. So the cars. <sighs> just hanging on to her. Then I'll either not bother or just hire now and again. It would be awful, really, after I've got used to driving, having, you know, having a vehicle again. I've had some good times with Alberta. And then I'm, I, I think I, what I was going to do is change how I visit places. For example, get a, I can get a um, certain amount of money off the train fares, go up and have a, like a couple of nights up in York. Because I haven't finished exploring that yet. I've done the cathedral, but I never got around to the castle or the city wall or some of the museums. So I might actually... Oh, what I might do is um, change how I do things. I mean, I was going up to London and staying. There are things I can do. Um, coaches. There are other ways around it. But, of course, the problem is with why I want to do the stuff out here. Is, um, it's not easy. You know, I couldn't have done today if I had to rely on a bus, for example. I could get out here, of course I can walk around, but how am I going to get home? Things like that. So I know there is a type of limited time. It's not all down to physical health. It's um, money. Being able to keep a vehicle on the road, it's not cheap. The way I'm talking about it is that if you haven't got a vehicle, you are limited to how long you can come out. I mean, doing a big walk like this today, and I mean a big walk, you wouldn't have time if you had to rely on a three o'clock bus and you never got out here to ten. You'd only have time probably to do the, maybe up Holford Glen and around this bit. Right, over and out for a little while. Over and out.